She said, young boy, I have a prophecy, a spiritual prophecy. She said, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. And in the years that follow, just as that woman prophesied, I have traveled the world and I have spoken to millions of people through my movies. Millions who up till this day couldn't see me. I, who, who up till this day I couldn't see while I was talking to them and they couldn't see me. They could only see the movie. They couldn't see the real me. But I see you today. And I'm encouraged by what I see. And I'm strengthened by what I see. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. The chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Never be discouraged, never hold back, give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, remember this, fall forward. Great oratory has three components, style, substance, and impact. Speeches like the one given by Denzel Washington are so powerful and impactful that they keep lingering on in our minds for days altogether. In the first episode of our podcast, we are thrilled to have amongst us a Toastmaster for 17 years. Wait a second, don't rush and judge his age because he started as a Gavalier in 2003 and literally grew up doing public speaking. He is a researcher on world religions and speaks, reads and writes eight languages fluently, including ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and ancient Hebrew. He is also a writer with currently 1.5 million content views on Quora.com where he has been the top viewed writer for speeches in 2019. He is the winner of SATAC 2020 International Speech Contest, Toastmaster Rafiq Ahmed. Welcome to our show, sir. Mark Twain once said, It usually takes me more than three weeks to prepare a good impromptu speech. He said, and I quote, I generally plan for about an hour of preparation time for every minute of speaking time. Yes, one hour per minute of talk time. Toastmaster Rafiq, our listeners are eager to know what preparations did you do for the international speech contest which were held online due to the unprecedented challenges of COVID-19. Hello there and thank you very much for taking this time to listen to me and thank you to District 79 for giving me this opportunity to share a message with you all. Well, a couple of weeks ago, you and I both witnessed an amazing event for the very first time which transpired online. Now, a few years back, if someone told me that this was going to happen online, I wouldn't have believed them. Because as we know it, contests and Toastmasters events have always been about networking and meeting new people and feeling their warmth and connecting with them. But with the unfortunate circumstances, we had to push ourselves to the online platform. Now, how was my experience through all of this? Well, to be honest, it was something completely different. And not just for me, but I'm sure for all those who have been involved in online events and contests, there is nothing that they, that they can actually prepare for in advance because it came in so sudden that it did not give you enough time to prepare. 
So I took that challenge as well and I looked at it as an opportunity for me to experiment a different side of me as a speaker. Warren Buffett, the famous American investor, business tycoon and philanthropist, has just one diploma hanging on his wall. His certificate for graduating from a Dale Carnegie public speaking course. Because he strongly believes that the skill of persuasion is the most important skill which can change your fortunes. Sir, could you share some of the challenges that you have faced and also your perspective on how to hone our public speaking skills? So how did I manage to get through District 79's attack 2020? Well, honestly speaking, there's one thing which I always keep in mind every year when I go into contest and that is that I do not carry with me the fear of losing or the fear of failure. Now, why would that help me? Well, in simple words, when you start failing and you start losing at something over and over again, you can look at it in two different ways. One. It could be a sign that maybe you're not good enough. Now that is something that I don't believe in. Two, it could be an opportunity for you to become someone better, to become better than who you were in the past. Now I have been in Toastmasters for the last 17 years. I've had my shares of wins and losses. But when I look back, it's during these times when I actually failed at something that I actually had the opportunity to learn something. After several years of competing uh, in public speaking contests, I have actually given up the fear of losing. So what does that what does that do to a speaker is it helps you to look at it as an opportunity for you to become some someone better than who you were before. So was that, was that the only winning formula that helped me go past District 79's International Speech Contest and become a winner? Well, that was one of the factors. The other is that when you look at contest and think of it as a platform for you to share that one message that you wanted to share with the rest of the world, something that has been burning inside you for so long and you could not keep it inside you anymore, And when that becomes your purpose, then everything else becomes secondary. And I would like to urge those of you who have lost hope, those of you who thought that probably losing contest was the worst thing that ever happened to you. Well, I'm here to tell you that I have lost more contests than than I have won them. If I can remember correctly and do the math correctly, In all the contests that I have been in in the last 17 years, in all the categories, I think I may have probably lost 50 times. How many times did I win? Maybe six or seven times. Now that makes me a biggest loser. But what it did to me was, it made me accept defeat and learn from it. And while doing so, although I was losing, but I was losing progressively. Now here's your take home for those of you who are listening. Are you losing or are you losing progressively? Because if you're just losing, then you need to stop doing whatever you're doing. That could be a sign that you are not good enough, maybe. But if you're losing progressively, it's a sign that you're actually developing yourself. Did you start losing at the club contest? And did you start losing later at the area contests and maybe at the division and then at the districts? When this happens to you, you're losing progressively. And by losing progressively, you're getting that much closer to where you want to be. You're getting that much closer to being a better speaker. I think I've had this great opportunity to be a progressive loser. And I'm proud to say that I have not taken a quantum leap in time to become a great speaker or a better speaker just after SETAC 2020. 
I'm probably the same speaker that I was. But I'm happy that I managed to lose progressively. To all my fellow Toastmasters and, and contestants, and those who aspire to be contestants next year, be prepared to lose progressively. Thank you very much. Wow, that was truly spoken from the heart. With that, we have come to the end of our conversation with our champion speaker, Toastmaster Rafiq Ahmed. I'm sure you all would have been able to relate with some of his experiences. From all of us from District 79 PR team, this is Toastmaster Malika signing off. Catch you all soon with another exciting episode. Till then, stay safe, stay happy and keep inspiring.